I'm yours for all time And I'll give you anything that I ever thought was mine I will follow your way for the rest of my day And all my life is in your hands We were talking, we ended last week talking about the fact that the Lord, when He calls you to do something, mm-hmm. He equips you to do something. Always. Always. He, uh, we talk about, the, uh, unlike the Pharaoh of Egypt, all right? So He knows the ministry He's called you to, and He mm-hmm. will equip you for it. Because He said, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. It says that in Jeremiah 21, 29. So God, not, nothing takes God by surprise. Mm-hmm. And I've promise you that nothing in your life is taking God by surprise. Yeah. He's had a call on your life from since when? Before the foundation. Well, he said to Jeremiah in Jeremiah yeah, chapter yeah, 1. In your mother's womb. He said, I, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Mm. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I, or, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. You know, it says John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit while he was yet in his mother's womb. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. And he also wrote the Lamb's b- Book of Life before creation. Our names were written in the Lamb's, Lamb's Book of Life, Life from before before mm-hmm. the foundation of the earth. Mm-hmm. So understand that, that God has had his plan for you from the beginning. All right? You're the one that's just discovered. It's, yes, that's okay. right. We're All just right. discovering it. Yeah. It's not like we show up and God is surprised. Oh, look at him. He's going to, yeah. no. Okay. So, but it's important to understand that, that, that you understand that God has had his hand on your life mm-hmm. from the beginning. Not from the time that you accepted him as Lord and Savior, but far before that, right? And he knows all the failings that we were going to fail. He knows them all yeah. before we even know it. He died for all of the failings. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Think about David. I mean, David is so important in the picture of the plan of, of God, right? David was a man after God's own heart. That's what it says, right? And the Lord chose him to serve his people. God chose him to serve his people mm-hmm. as king. But he called him to, to serve as shepherd. Yes. And Psalm 78 says this, starting in verse 70. He also chose David his servant and took him from among from the sheepfolds, from the care of the ewes with suckling lambs. He brought him to shepherd Jacob his people, and Israel his inheritance. So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them with his skillful hands. Don't you understand that David... And he showed his faithfulness in being a shepherd That's to his natural father's flock. Mm-hmm. That was God's preparing him for what would come. And David, it says, did it with the, in, with the in, in integrity with, in his, his heart, heart. Right. and with skillful hands. Whatever ministry you are called to, I pray <laughs> that you would fulfill it, first of all, with integrity. All right? With a purity of heart and with skillful, skillful hands. hands. Now, where are you going to get the skillful hands? God has appointed in the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip you for the work of service. God's Word equips you for the work of service. And the Holy Spirit, who was sent to lead you into all truth, lives within you. All right? So apply those skills that God has given you. The Lord took a shepherd who was faithful to his father's call and gave him the ministry of shepherding his people. He took Peter, mm-hmm. who was a fisherman, grew up in a family of fishermen, and called him to be a fisher of men. I mean, he had his hand on him from the beginning. He had his hand on you from the beginning. Mm-hmm. It's not that God used their skills and talents to serve his purposes. It was that he had been preparing them with their skills and talents all of their lives for his coming call. Everything that's going on in your life, God will use. Remember, he's the potter, we're the clay. Yes. He's molding and shaping. So, isn't that what it sounds like when David wrote in Psalm 139? Mm-hmm. You know the psalm? For you formed my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, 
for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14. We are the work of his hands. We are the sheep of his pasture. And his work, are, his works are wonderful. Works are incredible. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? You are his work. Yes. That's why you're precious in his sight. The world is so concerned, it seems, particularly in, the, in our Western civilization. Is it civilized? In our, in our Western culture, how is that? Mm. With the whole concept of self-esteem. Mm. And it's, it's destroying lives, I believe. Yes, it is. When you understand how much God esteems you, that God says that you are precious in His sight, and that you you are the work of His hands. You'll never have a problem with self with esteem. No. Okay. You'll know that you're precious in His sight. Jesus saved me. He forgave me. He is molding and shaping and making me what He wants me to be. Jesus saved me, He forgave me, He is molding me into what He wants me to be. I will serve Him.